Yeah, so in a nutshell, and, and the the language itself may throw people off a little bit, which is fine as well. But I think um, what I mean by guide and attentional search is that we make decisions on time, space and numbers. So perception and action are coupled. So players are scanning the field, they're, they're identifying opportunities, which are affordances, but they're in, in layman's terms, they're identifying opportunities to act. So they're perceiving in order to act. So based on where the open space is, where the closing of space is, where the teammates are, where the ball is situated, how close it is to the goal or away, or so many different possibilities. Players are making decisions on time, space, and the numbers, whether it's 1v1, 1v2, 2v1, and so on. So effectively, because we know that players are making these decisions through perception, decision, and then execution, action, how can our language be used in such a way where it guides players to make their own decisions? So if we want players to be game responsive, how can we phrase our words carefully so that we're not taking away decision-making from them? And effectively, that's what the presentation was about um, in layman's terms, is raising an awareness uh, for people's coaching language. Because a lot of people in the room, and there were so many directors of coaching in the room. Uh, there was a couple of people in the room who work at academy level, in the DA, there were some who work at grassroots level. There were some who work at college level. There was a couple of D1 college coaches in the women's game. And it was a whole host of experience. And uh, it was fascinating because a lot of them, they, they even openly admitted that there wasn't necessarily a consistent language in their own organizations or even an awareness themselves of, you know, their own use of their own, the metaphors they use or the verbs or the just the phrases that they use how that may take away decision-making. And I think often in coaching, we we isolate the mechanics of a skill. So we break down the, the, the decision and the skill into real small parts, which is a reductionist approach. But as, as research, and as I mentioned in one of the last podcasts with you, is that isn't necessarily the best way either. Because often, you know, breaking it down into its parts doesn't mean that we can put it back together again. You know, the, the game can't be taken away. Actions within the game aren't taken away in isolation. It's in context to a scenario. So how can we become more skillful rather than giving people feedback in isolation from the game and breaking it down where they're copying our movements, our demonstration, our solution to the problem? How can we get them more responsive to the environment by making their own decisions and they're, they're coming up with their own movement solution. 